Uh, greetings, it's me, uh, Wayman29, and um, just come back on for a little bit. Uh, hopefully this light doesn't wipe me out too much, but um, I just wanted to uh, yap about some stuff on uh, creation, because uh, there seems to be uh, a lot of confusion about um, what exactly is going on in the literature. So what we're going to do is uh, go over a few things from the biblical text, uh, the old the Old Testament, um, and then we'll check out some um, ancient Near Eastern texts and uh, other creation stories. So um, hopefully it'll be pretty interesting. In the Bible, um, there's two accounts of creation. In chapter one, um, it starts out. Um, that text was written by a priest, they believe. Um, just before the fall to the Babylonians around uh, 587 BC and um, the uh, the other text uh, let me look here not all that bright but the other text was uh, created by um, the uh, writer from uh, Judah um, who um, was a little bit earlier, so they wrote at two different time periods, and um, the, pre the priestly text, um, all this is based on the documentary theory by, uh, by uh, Richard um, Elliot Friedman, um, and earlier scholars who said that the uh, Old Testament was kind of patch patchworked uh, together with different writings in different time periods. Mainly the uh, priestly text is concerned with uh, priestly codes. Um, there's also later um, a, a writer um, they call D or Deuteronomy, um, which uh, put together the law codes that they found on the reform in uh, King Hezekiah. And uh, that's written about in the biblical text. Um, the priestly code, he, he's mainly concerned with numbers and uh, doing things right. So so the first uh, chapter, Genesis, and the worst um, thing that probably was done was the split into chapters, um, because Genesis chapter 1 really ru runs to uh, Genesis chapter 2 verse 3, um, where, ya where um, Elohim blesses the, um, the day, the the seventh day of creation. And uh, just to talk a little bit more about the um, the naming of the gods, uh, the um, conservative viewpoint, Christian viewpoint, was that when God said, let us make man, um, it would mean the Trinity. However, in the Jewish point of view um, of that time and from the straight up Jewish writings, um, that was not the case, and, and a lot of scholars uh, believe that um, when God said "Let us," it referred to the uh, the heavenly court, and um, the name uh, "Yellow Elohim" means the gods. But a lot of times, people use um, the definition uh, "God." However, the name Elohim is is definitely plural. And in the ancient Near East, the name El was God, and El was also the name of the Canaanite pantheon god, who was later um, pushed out of the, uh, the role as king um, by Baal. Um, Baal just became more popular, so. Uh, but it was kind of funny because anytime they wanted to do something uh, like Baal or. Uh, Anit or um, Astarte, um, they would have to run and ask out permission. He'd just be like, yeah, whatever. So he, he was kind of like hanging out in the background. Then as Baal came on the scene more and more, uh, he was kind of shoved back. Um, so what happens is uh, in Psalms 82, um, there the writer has Yahweh taking the place of El in the heavenly court and addressing the gods. There's also um, K 
cases in Job where you see the uh, heavenly council in play, and also in Kings um, where God convenes the court on to what to do about uh, political matters in Israel. Uh, I'm not. I can't remember the reference right off bat for that, but it's there. And um, so that was the case. Yahweh, um, there was a there was a Persian god named Yu. However, in the Canaanite text, um, there's a writing where um, Yahweh is the uh, um, son of El. Uh, the name the name is almost pronounced uh, the same, and the spelling is almost the same. So, uh, a lot of people feel, for the most part, that uh, the name was used either from the Canaanite or, or Persian um, origin. And just as Baal was a war god, uh, a lot of the attributes of Baal were attributed to Yahweh. Um, the term Jehovah in the Bible is um, a scribal error. Um, I think it was the uh, the vowels of um, no, it's the it's the consonants of uh, Yahweh and the vowels of Adonai. So when they got there, they were supposed to say Adonai, and the word Jehovah was used so that the writers or the readers would not say Yahweh or or Elohim, because it was a custom not to say the name of the gods. But in Genesis chapter one, um, Elohim is creating, and uh, by by word of mouth, um, he forms uh, the creation. Uh, what's what's really interesting is some texts uh, start out um, in the beginning. However, uh, probably one of the one of the better renderings, not that I know a whole lot about Hebrew writing, but um, would be what I mean is more consistent would be when 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 Elohim began to create, because uh, from the theological standpoint, um, he always existed and he just had the point decided to create um, the start of creation is pretty interesting in um, the Hindu religion uh, the god Indra uh, discovered that he was and when he discovered that he was that he himself existed uh, he, he was scared so he needed to uh, make creation in order to not be scared which is a pretty interesting read all right now we'll now we'll turn in here to uh, uh, the text called uh, Ra and the Serpent. And here it's um, the Egyptian myth of creation. One of them. I, I think there's a couple. It's Ra the Sun, the Supreme Lord of Egypt. And the great Neverter spoke these words after appearing. I'm not very good at pronouncing this stuff. so. But anyways, it says, uh, I am the one who came into being as Capri, the life giver. I was the creator of all forms of life which now exist. I was the one to emerge from primeval matter. After I appeared, all forms of life eventually appeared for the first time. Just after I appeared, I was alone and I raised up my hand. For neither heaven nor earth existed, and there wasn't any plants or dry land nor, or reptiles in Egypt. Then I spoke, and the living creatures arose out of none, the, prim the primeval uh, see, I put all the creatures back into the state of rest and none so I could find a place to stand. I made up a plan of creation in my heart, and I started my work by leaving a foundation in Egypt. I designated every living cr creature by myself. I was still alone, for I had not exhaled phew, the wind, and I had not spat tough nut, the rain. So here we have... Uh, foundation being laid in Egypt and of course everybody in creating uh, these uh, belief systems and theology and uh, myths uh, you always wanted your nation to be uh, number one so you read a uh, Babylonian um, creation account the same thing would be the seed of creation would be Babylon so and even in modern-day religions uh, a lot of times um, 
when certain groups start, you'll find some stories in the news about how some people think that their own state or county would be the start of creation and whatnot. Now the creator, um, Capri, um, we were visiting in Egypt. Um, he's on the wall of the uh, Temple of Esna. And um, he's forming man out of clay. So that's another reference. He was a clay god. And also, um, as the creator, um, there's a difference between um, gods who create instruments or tools and gods who create universe. Now, Yahweh and some of the Egyptian gods here who, who created the earth um, were different from the gods of the Greeks who, um, who created tools. Now, Wahathis, um, he's the Canaanite god who created the tools of war for Baal to slay um, the sea god Yom, I think it was. And um, I can't remember the Greek god of creation who made the chariots and the, and the houses, but however, uh, somebody could look that up. But anyways, that would that would be a reference. And um, so then we'll, we'll move on to Inki and the World Order. Um, the Uma Elish, the Babylonian uh, creation myth explains how national phenomenon and social institutions on Earth came to being and were regulated. So we have some of the same stuff where people just uh, talked about how um, things were established. Let me find a good spot here to start. There's also a story on um, uh, the creation uh, myth where um, the gods actually had to work. And one reason why they worked, they got tired of doing the work, so uh, they created man to uh, do the work. Uh, here is Uma Elish uh, creation myth. Um, when there was no heaven, no earth, no height, no death, no name. When Afsu was alone, the sweet water, the first begetter, and Timat, the bitter water, and that returned to the womb, her mumum, when there were no gods. When sweet and bitter mingled together, no reed was platted, no no rushes muddied the water. The gods were nameless, natureless, featureless. Then from Asp, Asu, time at, and the water, waters, gods were created and the waters silt precipitated. So here you have even um, the, uh, the gods being created from the waters instead of, which is pretty neat how um, man was created from the clay in ancient Near East, uh, sometimes mud and sticks and things, and, and here you have um, gods also be created from from certain elements. Um, so that's that's the extent of it. Uh, there's probably a lot more, so hopefully that kind of gives a rounded view of the kind of context this is taken in. So. Hope you enjoyed it, and uh, I'll be posting some more, so uh, take care.